All you need is love. Happy Halloween, everyone, and welcome to the decks where we bring you trivia and battle strategies for the coolest Pokemon you know. I'm Pokekels. And I'm Beauty Alex. So, like, when you think of Salazzle, right, what do you, like, think of? Where did your mind go? Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, Parth and Genesis, uh, the Pokemon company's inability to, to distinguish reptiles from amphibians and uh, neurotoxins. Oh. Okay, now you. Um, like, uh, Pythagoras... And all that same, the, uh, uh -huh. you know, the yeah. Pythagorean. Yeah. Are you sure you weren't just secretly trying to address how sexy Salazzle is by getting me to bring it up instead? Don't call it sexy. That's so okay. So weird. Okay, fine. Salazzle is hot. A attractive. Scientifically accurate and very superbly you know, designed. That, that's more like it. Don't look up the fan art, folks. It's Salazzle. The sexy lizard Pokemon. I mean, yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Salazzle is an all-female species of Pokemon that has a unique fire poison typing that it only shares with its pre-evolution, Salandit. Even though both male and female Salandit exist, only the females evolve into Salazzle and they lead large groups of Salandit in the wild. Salazzle almost certainly takes heavy inspiration from the Japanese Firebelly Newt, a type of salamander that are black on their backs and have fiery patterns on their undersides. And if that isn't salazzle enough for the Salazzle Club, Firebelly Newts also happen to secrete a toxin so powerful that if you were to eat one, you would suffocate and die over the course of six hours. That is not type. And that's probably where the poison typing comes from, but salamanders are often associated with fire because they like to hide in wet environments. When we still didn't understand animals that well, people would start fires with their wet log piles and not know salamanders were hiding inside. When they sensed the fire, the salamanders would try to escape the logs, leading people to believe that they were born from fire. Sad for the little guys, but it is a pretty cool reputation. Little baby Targaryens. The second part of Salazzle's name comes from Dazzle, which in this context refers to the definition to overwhelm with an impressive quality. In Salazzle's case, this probably refers to pheromones that they constantly exude that attract male Salandit from far and wide to serve in their reverse harems, as they're called in the Pokedex. Weirdly, a reverse harem is a term used almost exclusively in anime. It means a group of men led by a female, and usually that female has some sort of romantic or sexual relationship with all of the males. It's a common anime genre, but it's not used in describing animal groups in any literature you will ever find, and trust me, we tried. That's not to say the term isn't appropriate, because it totally is. I just wanted you all to know that the writer of the Pokedex entry is probably a fan of the genre, and I love seeing the personalities of game writers coming through in their games. Reverse harems and love spell pheromones. This is getting to be a pretty steamy episode. For some reason, you seem like you're about to take me even further. I totally am, but don't worry. We gotta keep the episode advertiser friendly or else we won't get any money. Yeah, bad job with that, YouTube, by the way. The entire system is just so poorly implemented. Ah, forget about it. I'm about to intro a brand new and highly ridiculous segment today. Oh, snap! What is it this time? Get ready to learn a little bit about Salazzle's rules of attraction in The Birds and the Bee Drills. Oh, I love it. Great title. I know. I'm way too proud of myself for it. Good. Should be. <laughs> it's important to know that Salazzle embodies the archetype of the femme fatale, a stock seductive woman character who lead their lovers into dangerous situations with their charms and entrancing powers. For Salazzle, that power comes from the pheromones she exudes, which attract the male Salandit for her to mate with. This is most likely a gender swap take on the mating behavior of newts. Certain species of male newts release intense pheromones that make females flock to them. These pheromones are so powerful that if they are present in the water and there are no male newts around, female newts will literally try to mate with anything else they can find. It's no wonder that the people of Alola sometimes use Salazzle's pheromones in diluted forms to make luxurious perfumes. After all, everybody wants to be wanted. Which actually reminds me of another animal that Salazzle has more than a little in common with, the New Mexico Whiptail. Yeah, these long-tailed lizards are an all-female species that reproduce via parthenogenesis. That means their eggs don't need to be fertilized in order to develop into an embryo, which means they can have babies without mating, and since no males are around to contribute chromosomes to the egg, all the eggs hatch female too. However, despite not necessarily needing to mate in order to produce offspring, the New Mexico whiptails do mate with one another anyway, which seems to determine when they decide to lay eggs. Solitary females that don't engage with other females generally will never produce eggs at all, which I think we can all agree is proof positive for that Beatles song. All you need is love. That 
is some really interesting stuff. Life on Earth is crazy, dude. I never even knew about those lizards. Right? I think that the takeaway here, though, is that all the sexiness that Salazzle exudes, and she owns it, by the way, it's definitely intentional. And that is, like, really bold for Pokemon, but I so dig it. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with kicking butt and looking good doing it, which reminds me... Oh, we know. It's time for VGC Battle Strats for Salazzle. When do they start? Right now, girl! Pokemon are sexy. Wait, no, no there's still, there's a line there, and you're just, you're just crossing it right now. You're crossing it. This is it. This little dance, that you're on the other side of the line. You're crossing that line. I don't even... This is the battle segment. Now listen, I'll be the first one to say this is a crazy strat, but Salazzle's fire poison typing and high speed stat make it a great anti-meta pick in this weird vortex of time between Worlds 2017 and the launch of Ultra Sun and Moon. Start with the hasty one and EV train it in special attack and speed. Flamethrower hits all the steel types in the meta, Sludge Bomb handles three of the four Tapus, and both can leave nasty status effects behind. And that's really what the set is about. Hang in the back if you want her to be a surprise, but once Salazzle is out, you can be sure it's going to pick up a mid-game KO or two. However, this wouldn't be something we recommend if it didn't have at least a few tricks up its sleeve, so go ahead and give it Fake Out as well. Sure, everyone's already going to expect you to have it, but that doesn't make it any less useful for stealing back control of the game after a switch or a KO. And in that last slot, we gotta recommend Protect here yet again, just because Salazzle's defenses aren't great, but if you run it with an air balloon alongside Garchomp, you can still keep up the offensive pressure even through an earthquake or two. Use this combo to literally ruin your opponent's day. And that's our weird plan for winning with this cool lower tier Pokemon. But of course, that's not the only way to train a Salazzle. So as always, here are a few random sexy thoughts. If you think you're clever enough to use it well, you can take the whole anti-meta thing to the next level by running Encore instead of Protect. Salazzle is scary and fast, and if you can predict who's gonna do it, Encoring a Protect can instantly hand you the momentum and match his tense first moments. Similar to Encore, but more effective towards the end of the match when switching out's pretty much all done, Salazzle also has access to Taunt. Use this and never get walled out again. Well, you probably still will a lot of the time, but hey, that's Pokemon. And finally, if you think you can get away with it, running Nasty Plot instead of Fake Out can put you in a pretty comfy position pretty quickly by doubling your special attack stat. But to pull it off, you have to know your opponent isn't going to attack you. So make sure that you understand the risks before you build your whole team around it or something. And that's it, Salazzle, the only Pokemon with official Rule 34 art. What? No, not even close to true, but if you're feeling like, damn, I love this crazy show, how about clicking the link in the description to buy our sick pink tea at theyeti.com slash the decks. And while you're down there clicking on stuff, take a look at our official decks Discord too. There's something there for every Pokemon fan and two huge Destiny clans too. I mean, Destiny clans. Right. It's called Destiny. They're both, it's the same thing. It's, for yeah. more trivia and strategy about your favorite Pokemon, click one of these weird end card thingies, and if you've got a second, why not take the time to acknowledge all our awesome Patreon patrons who support us not only financially, but also in battle with dope healing and status spells. I'm Beauty Alex. And I'm Pokekels. Tune in next week for another classy episode of The, the Dex. Dex.